I'm happy everybody's here thinking about these issues. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of a, a segue. We're going to talk a little bit about anatomy and medical care. Uh, so just an overview, we're going to talk a little bit about me since I'm new to the area, uh, some hip and knee anatomy, a little bit about arthritis, how we can prevent it, and how we can treat it. So I oh. You know, does, is the battery dead here? Let's see. We're on, right? Yeah, it's not lighting up anymore. Not lighting up. Okay. Do you have a backup? I think so. Because that light should stay on, right? It doesn't. Okay, we're going to see if we can find another. Check, 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 check. Is that coming through? Not really. Can you guys hear me back there? Not really. <laughs> Yeah. Outside voice. We we can do that. Hopefully, I'll be able to talk to patients this afternoon. Uh, if I yell like that, can you guys hear me in the back? Okay. We'll try loud. I don't know if Dr. Jankosko will be able to do it as well, but uh, we'll see. So, a little bit about me. I grew up in Landenburg, Pennsylvania, about an hour twenty minutes north of here. I did go to the University of Delaware. I'm a fighting blue hen. Uh, from there, I went on to medical school in Philadelphia, uh, Jefferson. The Phillies were nice enough to win the World Series when I was there. It's a picture of my wife and I. We were lucky enough to be at the game when they did it, uh, which after a whole childhood of suffering was really, uh, really great. And now we're back to suffering again. Uh, from there, I went up to Syracuse, New York, spent five years in my orthopedic residency at a busy level one trauma center. Uh, this is a real life picture of the house that we lived in. And uh, definitely don't miss those days of shoveling every morning. Uh, from there, I was lucky enough to be able to head down south a little bit. I just completed a total joint replacement fellowship down at Duke. This is me with uh, my mentors and my co-fellow. It's my daughter there uh, in front of the chapel walking her baby around. And now I landed down in Easton, uh, really happy to be on the Eastern Shore. And uh, I've been at it about six whole weeks now and uh, just really loving the area. <laughs> So just a little bit about anatomy, I try to keep it basic. Uh, as most of you know, the hip is a ball and socket joint, consists of the femoral head and the acetabulum or the socket, uh, and that's all lined with hyaline cartilage. It's a nice smooth gliding uh, substance, it's cushiony. Uh, that whole joint itself is surrounded by a joint capsule, and within that capsule is synovial fluid, which lubricates the cartilage, but it also provides nutrients to the cartilage. The knee joint is a hinge joint, uh, it's a little more complicated than that though. There's actually three articulations that we talk about. We have one on the inside or the medial, one on the outside or the lateral compartment, and then one underneath the kneecap where it glides with the, uh, the trochlea or the end of the femur there. You also have two meniscus or menisci, which are kind of two C-straight structures which help increase the surface area of contact there. Uh, there's a joint capsule here as well and of course synovial fluid. So what exactly is osteoarthritis? There's a lot of people that have arthritis and a lot of different ways to get to it, but your basic run-of-the-mill osteoarthritis is what I'm trying to focus on today. It's basically degradation of that cartilage. So instead of a nice gliding uh, surface, that cartilage gets chewed up. You end up having bone on bone, uh, which of course is painful, develops stiffness, swelling, and loss of motion. So just orthopedists love looking at x-rays. I like pictures. On the left is a good one good hip, on the right is a bad hip. Uh, I know it's probably tough for you guys to see in the back, but uh, suffice it to say that you see a good joint space here. And that's because the cartilage doesn't show up on the x-ray. So when we get the x-ray, we see a good space above that femoral head. <laughs> on the right here, there's no space. That cartilage is all gone. We no longer see that space there. Similar findings in the knee. Again, between the femur and the tibia here, you see the nice joint space here on the right is an arthritic knee and you see that joint space is completely gone. That patient's rubbing bone on bone. Uh, one of the things that's really difficult to differentiate is uh, pain that's coming from your hip versus pain that's coming from your spine. Unfortunately, arthritis doesn't tend to just strike one joint for people. It kind of runs everywhere. And a lot of times people with hip arthritis also have back arthritis. And just because you have arthritis doesn't mean that you have pain, oddly enough. There's a lot of people that have really bad looking x-rays and the patients are doing quite well. Uh, and the converse is also true. So uh, one of the things that's hard to differentiate is people with hip pain, uh, I, part of my job in the office is figuring out where it's coming from. So 
Pain that comes from your spine or a pinched nerve in your low back often involves the low back, can involve the buttock and lateral thigh, and often it radiates down to the foot. If you have pain that radiates all the way down to your foot, I'm 99% positive that's not coming from your hip joint. As opposed to pain from the hip, most of the time people say they have pain in their groin. That's, that's kind of a, a, a real good uh, test there. It can also radiate down to your thigh or your knee. And patients often kind of grip it like that, like I have in this picture here. That's called the C sign. And that's pretty specific for hip arthritis. And sometimes when we're not really sure where the pain's coming from, a steroid injection into the hip joint itself can help differentiate. If you get a steroid injection and all your pain goes away, we can be pretty confident it's coming from that hip joint. If you don't get any relief, then we need to start looking down other avenues. But that's for another talk. And what's the natural history of this? As many of you probably know, there's a lot of ups and downs. And these ups and downs really correspond with inflammation. You know, there's times where your joint gets irritated, uh, it becomes inflamed, you know, the so-called flare-up. And uh, most of our therapies, at least conservative therapies, are aimed at reducing this inflammation. So why do we get arthritis? Unfortunately, a lot of it has to do with genetics. If you have family or parents that had arthritis in all their joints, chances are you're probably going to get it, unfortunately. And there's not much we can do about it. Age. Uh, weight plays a big role, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And then injuries to your joints can lead to cartilage damage, which can kind of propagate down the line. Again, there's multiple other causes, a little bit beyond the scope of this talk today. So how do you protect yourself? Uh, it would be great if we could all just have good luck, good genetics, never injure any of your joints. Not many patients that I see in the office have good luck, so we'll just forget that. Uh, the other really two big things that I can think of are staying active and maintaining a healthy weight. So staying active, I'm talking low impact exercises, walking, biking, swimming, the elliptical. And this really helps maintain healthy cartilage. The cartilage actually likes that mechanical stress. It helps, uh, helps build up the cartilage. People that are active actually have thicker cartilage uh, than people that are not active. Uh, and it also helps circulate that synovial fluid which bathes the cartilage and keeps it nice and healthy. <coughs> healthy weight. Uh, this is something that you know, not a lot of people realize They've done plenty of biomechanical studies. Uh, your knee joint doesn't just see your body weight. Depending on what you're doing, that knee can see three times your body weight during just regular walking, 11 times your body weight when you're going downhill. So that's definitely significant. Your hip joint, when you're walking, it's seeing four times your body weight. So that sounds bad, but on the converse, you know, if we can become active and do these low impact exercises, if we lose 10 pounds, we're unloading 40 pounds off of our knee joints. You can just imagine. I mean, 40 pounds is significant. Sometimes that's enough to get you feeling better and get you back to life. So what if the ship has sailed? Sometimes you have to put on the uh, foul weather gear. Uh, that's me on my buddy's boat back in college. Uh, well, give us a call at the orthopedic center. Uh, first line of treatments that we generally try, and these are things you can try before seeing us, of course, but anti-inflammatories, try to decrease that inflammation. Things like Motrin, Aleve, uh, light exercise program, just get the joint moving, try to circulate some of that synovial fluid, weight loss. Those are all what I would consider first line. Second line, once those things aren't working, things like injections. Uh, we do a few different types of injections. Kind of our tried and true is the steroid injection. Uh, we do a lot of those, and there's also visco supplementation injections. And again, goal is all the same, just trying to decrease the inflammation. Some people get a steroid injection. It's, it's kind of like opening up the knee and dumping a whole bottle of ibuprofen in there, just trying to put out that fire and get it to calm down. Uh, some people are good for six months after an injection. Some people are good for three months. Uh, it's really hard to predict, but again, we're just trying to calm things down. Uh, there's a lot of other things that people use, uh, different braces, uh, using a cane or a walker, some type of uh, device like that, and other joint supplements. You know, there's, I, I'd say take it or leave it. If it helps you, I don't think it's hurting anything, certainly, so do it. Uh, but I don't necessarily prescribe these things for everybody that comes in through my door. At the end of the road, joint replacement. Again, this is kind of for another, uh, another talk, but basically what we end up doing is removing the diseased cartilage and bone and replacing it with metal and plastic. So instead of bone on bone rubbing, we have, in most instances, metal and plastic. Good news is you don't have any nerves in your metal and plastic, so you don't have pain. So that's really the goal. A lot of people like to ask, Doc, when do I need my hip or knee replaced? And the answer is really never. Nobody should be pushing you to do a joint replacement. My wife's going to hate that I said that today because that's how my kids eat. Uh, but you never really need a joint replacement. But 
when all conservative measures have failed and your joint continues to lead you with significant disability in your day-to-day -day life, when it prevents you from doing the things you want to do or enjoy, these are the times to start talking or thinking about it. Uh, while, we're, while we're there, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the Joint Center uh, down in Easton. Uh, started in 1997, we really have personalized care for joint replacement patients down at the hospital. Uh, we're part of the University of Maryland network and what I've learned over the six weeks that's really cool is we keep stats for the entire network and little old Easton down there we're consistently in the top three in the system in terms of volume, low complications, length of stay so that's really uh, really great to be a part of. Uh, we have our orthopedic nurse navigator Hope she's in the back there raise your hand Hope. Uh, she's the superhero of the unit and uh, she is involved in your care everywhere from preoperative joint classes. Uh, she sees you while you're at the hospital and even in a staple removal clinic after your surgery. Uh, and just down at the hospital there, uh, my two partners, because I wasn't here yet, did over 500 total joints last year. So we're not just throwing five or 10 of these things in. We have a real well-oiled machine down there. I think that's something that not a lot of people know. So in summary, osteoarthritis is the wearing out of that joint cartilage. Prevention in involves staying active, maintaining a healthy weight, uh, of course other things too, but I think those are the big take home. Uh, and treatment is really aimed at decreasing that inflammation and then joint replacement is a last resort. Some of my resources. I'm gonna turn over to my partner, Dr. Jan Costco, to talk about the shoulder. You guys could hold tight for three seconds.